care how many times I've seen this, I always cry. <laughs> so sorry. It's hard to do a Q&A with tears, right? Yeah, I'm like, please don't have any, you know, anything. <laughs> well, let me just first say, so basically we're going to chat amongst ourselves and then we'll open it up to you guys for questions. But I want to congratulate all of you. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. And you don't often see films like this that are so well written, so well acted, and give space for the, for the film to happen. I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure I speak for everybody here when I say this is an important story. And so many of us will go through some version of this, but it's hardly ever shown on screen. So thank you for bringing it to the world and for bringing it here. And Sarah, let's start with you. I mean, this is your second feature film. Tell us a little bit about your backstory and how this story came to be. Uh, so I, I originally wrote it as a stage play uh, in New York City. Uh, when I had a first draft, uh, I was looking for a director to help me move forward with the piece. And Karen and I um, had met uh, in the off-Broadway world at Rattlestick Playwrights Theater. Uh, she knows our uh, my co-producer, um, Brian Long, very well. And so I came to Karen uh, to see if she'd be interested in directing um, or acting in it. And uh, thankfully, she said, yeah, she would love to be part of the project. And that was like, what, six years ago now? At least, At least six years ago. Uh, so as a stage play. And that went through many iterations. Uh, we were at Cherry Lane Theater in Massachusetts, uh, Dorset Theater in Vermont. Uh, what else were we? Um, uh, the Berkshires, the Berkshires. Yeah. Well, as well, we did tons of readings in New York. Readings, and, yeah. yeah. So, uh, when COVID hit and theater really uh, dwindled down, uh, I had decided to turn it into a screenplay for a myriad of reasons, uh, and so that's when I went to adapting the stage play uh, into a screenplay, and uh, had talked with Karen about that as well. And the backstory of this film is very personal to you as well, which I think really helped make this script what it is. So it's not, uh, it's definitely fiction, but my father uh, was suffering, um, uh, going through cancer when I was uh, very young, when I was 15 years old. And I am from Buffalo, New York, and he was a very blue collar, so it was Bill. <laughs> um, but he was a very blue collar, man and to watch this disease sort of uh, riddle him and turn him into the strapping strong thing, the pillar of our community and our family um, and turn into this, this gray, you know, hairless person. I know that he was embarrassed and we had many life discussions at that time and they were really raw and honest. And I used a lot of our conversations in the actual film to pay homage to him. Karen, welcome back. You were here a couple of years ago with your film. And I was watching the EPK for this film. And in it, you said that, you know, you do major Hollywood films, but in the past number of years, you've also done a lot of independent films. Talk a little bit about that and then sort of what it is about this story that drew you to this film. Well, I love working on independent films because I feel as though, um, you know, the writing and the stories that a lot of the filmmakers, a lot of times they are uh, writer directors who have created the films. And so there's not that sometimes distance that there can be in, in films where, you know, a director is hired to do a story that's created by a number of writers and you, you can get a, a kind of strange, um, you know, separation that, that exists between the kind of the heart and the soul of the, of the piece. And um, so I've just found I'm, I'm more drawn to indie films in the last maybe 10 years or so. Um, the scripts, I read better scripts um, uh, that are being made by independent filmmakers. And I think what drew me to this piece from the very beginning was um, 
working with Sarah and, and that we developed this way of working on the play. It's rare when you have that kind of time to really work. I mean, this, this play or this piece, this film has changed so much from the first versions of this that were written. And uh, we had an extraordinary um, director, uh, acting coach named Larry Moss, who came in the last couple of years and worked with us as well and had some wonderful ideas that he and, and Sarah worked on. Um, and it just kept, you know, we, we just had the time and Sarah had the openness and willingness to really get in and hone the story and figure out what story she wanted to tell. And um, to be a part of that and to be able to be, you know, in that process was was a very, you know, it's very satisfying creatively. William, do you go by Bill or William? Bill. Bill. So you and Karen are a tour de force together. I mean, <laughs> I can't believe we've never seen you on screen like this. I know. It surprised me too. So how did you come to be involved? No one was more surprised than me. I think I think I have to thank Jeff DeMunn for finding something else to do, don't I? I wasn't uh, not exactly sure how I came to your attention, but they asked me to come. And uh, the very first time I read it, um, Stephen Lang. We'll blame yeah. it on oh, Stephen right. Lang. He that, said, oh, "Call." Right. He said, "Call Bill." Call said, Bill. "Yeah, yeah." I and had we had met once before and sat and had lunch just across the table from each other, and right. just really, I, I just had a very nice memory of meeting you. So, I mentioned it to Sarah, and uh, she thought it was a great idea. I mean, I'm like, he's a Bills fan, so yeah, Buffalo. And he's from Buffalo, so that was important. <laughs> But I mean, from the minute though that um, um, the very first time I read it through, it began to speak to me. I was there were funny thing when you're an actor, you play you act all the roles as you read the thing I do anyway, um, and you sort of have a, a crap detector. You have a you know when things don't read true or they you can tell. No, that wouldn't that that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound honest. And again and again and again throughout this thing, um, your credit, it it felt honest, and it was. And I found myself being um, moved the very first time I read it at your apartment. Um, we sat down around, it was around a table, and I found as just saying the words out loud, I found myself like um, it was. It was just resonating for me, and it was I just found that uh, extraordinary. And I've done big movies, and I've done little tiny movies. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done one that spoke quite as uh, as much to my heart. This one, I mean, indie, indie films like this that have this kind of passion and this sort of, just have skin in the game. You know, there's, there's a commitment and a, and a um, and you can feel it. You can feel it in the writing, and I think you. <laughs> and it was an adventure because I've never done anything like this in my life. Um, wow, you're a natural. You should take a bath. I was naturally sick. <laughs> <laughs> it is very hard to play something that you're not. Well, I'm not an actor. How would I know? Um, but to do it with authenticity. Thank you. Yeah. I really felt like all of the acting in the film, like it was you, it, not you individually, but that you were those people, you became those people. Yeah, that was... So congratulations yeah. on that. And you know, it's also hard to weave two separate stories together sometimes effectively and really have them interwoven and then come out at the end where the audience is like, oh, okay, that wasn't just a device. And so. You guys, um, I'm sorry. It's Marlon and Marlon. Marlon. Yeah, Marlon and Emily. And Emily. So how did you come to be involved in, you know, a script like this? You're a little bit younger. Um, how did that resonate with you? Um, how did it resonate with me? I 
I love, I saw this as a love story. Um, and I deeply appreciated that it was a love story between two people in what I like to say is a further chapter in life. And um, if that's politically correct, you know, it is, right? Um, but but I, I, it resonated with me because I, I want to live into that. I mean, I, I too am, am tired of seeing the same um, love story told over and over again. And, and this, this reminded me of my grandparents and um, real, true love that sustains. And, and it, it, I'm just drawn to deeply human, honest stories. And I just think that this is a universal challenge and conversation that nobody wants to think about and nobody wants to talk about. Uh, but if we're lucky enough to love somebody this deeply, we'll all have to face one day. And um, so it's ultimately a, a beautiful thing to explore. And um, I, I've worked with Sarah once before on her first feature film and Brian, her co-producer, and I was just, I thought they were miracle makers and magic makers with what it takes to make an independent film. And so um, I will gladly collaborate with them whenever, whenever they will have me. Yeah, um, I was a recommendation um, to Sarah and she reached out to me about the project and uh, sent me the script and you know, asked me to do a self-tape and read the script and did the audition. And the script was beautiful. I mean, you know, talking about love, talking about loss, uh, a lot of things that people can relate to. And also for me, Joey is someone I can really relate to. Um, so I felt his journey and that character, something special. Um, that, you know, the emotion that he has and and the family and also this family that he has is something that I definitely loved about the story and the character, so. You all did an incredible job. Um, I'm sure people have questions. Comments? Comments. Yes. Yes. Um, what was the, were there any key differences in adapting from a stage play so the screenplay was originally three characters. Uh, uh, sorry, three, excuse me. Um, sorry. The, uh, the theater piece, the play, was originally three actors in one setting. It was set in the kitchen of Barry and Cora's home. So it was Cora, Barry, Joey. Um, and we heard through stories, uh, other uh, about Joey's family, about other people. With the screenplay, uh, I really felt it was important to dive deeper into Joey's family life and narrative and, and challenges in life uh, because at the end, when Cora is making the decision whether or not she's going to join her husband or stay for those left behind, I felt that we need to to be rooting for the person that she stays for. And so for me, we had to really see Joey's home life and dive deeper into that. Uh, that, that was a huge difference and something that Karen and I talked a lot about. And, um, you know, it, it's tricky to weave those two things together and not distract from either story or pull yourself out. So that was, that was constantly a challenge uh, during shoot and during editing. You have a beautiful button at the end there with uh, Bill and that. Um, the love story begins, sorry, the love story begins uh, one way, and it seems like at the end she goes back to writing as it started, and the camera fades up and out almost as if he might come in again, as if it's coming full circle with something. Um, it was a beautiful button, it seemed to me. Uh, I mean, were, were there echoes that you were taking there? Sure. There was a scene 
uh, earlier on while Cora was uh, buttering Joey's toast and talking about her mom uh, with the cinnamon and sugar. And she was talking about uh, how she fell into a very dark place. She only wrote this one book. And Joey makes mention, uh, you know, she never got her way out of that after losing her son as well. Uh, and Joey makes the comment, it feels like writing was your way out of it. And so again, Cora has lost, has felt lost with the loss of her husband. Uh, and so her writing at the end, me, was her taking that advice, you know, living with grief, but trying to move on and trying to live life how people would want her to live on, how Barry would want her to live on, to laugh, to cry, to live. Uh, so her writing at the end was full circle in that way. Yes, sir. Yeah, just bravo. Just great, uh, it's a great piece for me. I was kind of taken aback by how you intertwine so many powerful narratives together. There's obviously the love story between the two older uh, characters, but then the upward mobility story by the younger characters trying to find his place. He has this tremendous talent and him kind of getting there. And then also, uh, so that, was that intentional? The, the love story obviously is central. Then the story of young people, you know, this uh, pull between home and then who you could be, who, you know, how do you balance you know, your ties to your, you know, the people in your life versus these further aspirations, you know, and that was great about your, your two, the journey of the younger people, you know, we have this great thing here, how do we maintain it? And then just another thing that kind of struck me, almost similar, kind of like an East of Eden thing between the two brothers in terms of how the father, you know, you know, I, you know, strong expectations for one, but I'm not really focusing, you know, and that other, he felt slighted in that, that was a very powerful piece how that kind of came together. So was that, it, it, it was masterful in the, uh, the, the, the the symmetry of all them together, but I was just wondering, was that something that you kind of saw these different powerful narratives that you're kind of intertwining, you know, throughout the, throughout the piece? I love that you brought up East of Eden. Uh, that's my favorite book ever, Thou Mayest. So, uh, you know, Tim Shell. Um, but really, uh, the play version and the screenplay version to me was always a cross uh, crossroads between this couple who have lived their lives, have made their choices, um, and are at the end of their lives, uh, coming to terms with Joey, uh, who is just starting his life and making his choices, and where it's going to lead him. Um, so I always felt that I, I don't know, it always felt like a cross to me. Um, and I liked bringing in Jim Bone and his challenges and Laura, who, you know, Emily, you brought, we had so many conversations about Laura because you can simply see her like the cheating girlfriend and she's like, you know, ew. Um, but, you know, Emily, I think brought a lot of, uh, you know, she was hurt. She's, you know, 18 years old and she's just pissed. And so what do 18 year olds do? You know, they do stupid stuff. Um, so I just thought that was really beautiful and real as well. Um, but yeah, I just, the whole thing is about love and it's about life and it's about messing up and it's about forgiveness and it's about all those types of things and just, you know, the circle, circle of life, right? And it's hard to do that all in a film and do it successfully. Of having the time to do it. Did it seem... Did it seem like the different threads that did they play nice with each other? Did they? Yeah. They did. Did, oh, yeah. did one make the other one resonate when you came back to it? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't jarring. Yes, right there. Among other things, I thought it was an incredibly well casted movie because every one of the characters just seems so naturally. You, you couldn't imagine another actor or actress doing the parts of the, of the people who were cast so perfectly. But I do have a question for Bill, which is, when you immerse yourself in a role that is essentially about your mortality, how difficult is it to do that? <laughs> um, well, you, 
it makes the being as old as I am um, made it easier <laughs> to um, to to um, find Barry. To find my Barry. I knew I knew immediately who he was and why he was trying to protect her from all of this. And uh, you know, he was proud one, strong one, and it's all going away. You know, I think it's. No, the, it wasn't difficult to, to go to those places. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's not fun. But it's not, but I, but it was easy to relate to someone who's, come, he's much closer to the end than to the beginning. Facing these kinds of questions, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, but, um, I, I do. So again, I have to give credit to, I don't know if you've ever acted opposite Karen Allen. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, it's one of the, I'm pretending to be in love with Karen Allen. It's one of the easiest things <laughs> you can imagine. She's absolutely, she, sit, she stands there across the room from you looking at you with those eyes. And, and it, don't you dare fucking look away. <laughs> you just like, come on, let's go. It's, and it was, it made it easy and it made it exciting. It didn't every scene, every scene that we shot felt, it felt like an improv. And you know, you know the lines and you know the cues and you know what happens in the scene. But when it, when it works, it's really alive and everyone's listening like that. It's easy. It's effort, it feels effortless. I can't believe you had never met only once before this. That's shocking to me. Yeah, I don't what know. was that show? It was some... I don't, I don't oh, know. I don't remember what it was. I have no memory of that. I just, we, we, you know, we, we were somewhere. Oh, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we did it. There was a, it was a story called Tin Star. And, and we didn't work together, but we ended up sitting at a lunch table together in the middle of a day. And he was there just for, he was just there for a couple of days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. I'm sure I was sitting there eating lunch. Oh my God. I'm I, uh, congratulations, first of all. I mean, it's a beautiful movie, and, and I know how hard it is. Uh, from a room full of uh, filmmakers, or like a lot of you filmmakers, can you talk about the moment when it went from like a dream, an idea, a, a, state, a re table read, to like, wow, we're going to make a movie? Because for us, that's the magic part that we're chasing. Well, we got funding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by the time we did the first table read, I think for me it was it was a very difficult transition to go from the play that I had worked on with just these three characters, and e even though there were elements of telling stories about things that were going on outside of the world between Barry and Cora, for most you know, for the most part, the whole play was focused on their story together. So when I had first read the screenplay, the going back and forth between the two worlds kept breaking the story in ways that were hard for me to adjust to. And I wasn't sure completely that we had captured the important elements of their story. So when we sat down to do the table read, we were we knew we were going to shoot the film in about a month. It was a it was a moving ahead, and we just now that that Bill was involved, we were just trying to refine and define what was really important to hold on to from the play to really make that story come to life. And and you know Bill was invaluable in helping us you know define his character in the new, this new version and 
And I had a lot of baggage I had to get rid of in order to take on a whole other version of this of the story. So we kind of worked on that together. Thank you. Sarah, sometimes in a somber mood piece like this, there'll be some comic relief uh, for various reasons. Uh, in some of the iter earlier iterations, was there some? And what was the, the thought process about whether to or not to? In the earlier piece, uh, there was, in the first scene, there was a lot of uh, comedy. And the one thing that Larry Moss, uh, the director who had worked with me, uh, and, and Karen on various readings, he's like, get them laughing and then like pull the rug underneath them, right? So it was a balance for me to show the love and the laughter and the joy in this relationship, but then get to the nitty gritty. And I, I, didn't, I didn't want to go over that too much. Um, you know, I need, I probably need to laugh more like me in life, but like, <laughs> and probably in my writing as well. Um, but, uh, you know, I did try to show the joy there in that first scene in the movie and to be like, this is a happy, like this is a happy little unit that they have, but you know, you got to get to the catalyst and then there's this whole other world and the theme of this battle, um, uh, this conversation, this tug of war between this couple. And so it was tricky to inject a lot of comic relief. And I heard a few people like chuckle here and there about stuff. I don't even know what it was, but, um, you know, so I think it, it's kind of in there, but I'm always worried about deflating the seriousness of the topic. And I, I'm still learning how to master that. Uh, honestly, because I don't want to depress anybody totally. Uh, yeah, just just partially, you know, <laughs> keep them laughing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. There's another question somewhere over here. Well, I have one. So, you know, your typical Q and A question: What's the plan for the bill? Uh, so this is our world premiere. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our wonderful DP Richard Sands is right here in blue. He worked with Karen and me. Wonderful. And actually, Karen's film, A Tree Rock a Cloud, played here in 2017, and Rick also DP'd that. So we are a nice little family unit, too. Um, so yes, uh, the next plan is uh, we're going to continue with the festival circuit, uh, just get into as many great festivals like Woods Hole. Thank you so much, Judy, for having us here. We are so beyond honored, honored. Beautiful festival. Um, you know, and just and uh, try to get uh, distribution. Um, that's really the goal. And so we've already had some people reaching out to us, inquiring, but I think that we really want to ride the festival route and see what the best options are for us. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll, sure, we'll play long on the festival circuit. I mean, doing this, I see a lot of films. I don't see a lot of films like this, um, which I think speaks speaks well to all of you that it's not that this is a risky film per se, but it deals with topics that are real, like you said, that most of us don't want to actually confront. So I think it will be well received and it's an important film and thank you for making it. Um, does anyone else have a last question? Please vote and then please come to the award ceremony at the Captain Kid once we finish counting the ballots. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.